Thank you. Good afternoon. First of all, I thank Francoise and Sylvie for inviting me in this very interesting workshop. I am learning a lot of things that I really need for my research. Um, I am a psychologist and I'm a psychologist, so I'm here to speak some, about something particular that is uh, what makes difference in uh, people in living in different environments. I have no, uh, I will not present to you anything directly related to uh, the use of underground uh, cities, but some that is more general, it has to do with uh, um, a very common problem, that is some people is really able to quickly adapt to a new novel environment, to learn novel environment, to orient, navigate, to become the master in a novel environment. Some of the people need a lot of time, hate to change environments, are unable to move, and became easily lost. Why? First of all, we should say that orientation, environmental orientation, navigation from the psychological and neural point of view are very complex skills that involve almost all of the cognitive processes, from the ability to perceive the world and to focus attention on the most salient environmental features, that, that which make difference and learning to, to, to recognize an environment and distinguish it from another, from the ability to mentally represent space, the ability to memorize the space in the right way, to planning our movements in environments, to recall, to monitoring our, our navigation, to reorient when we are disoriented, and so far and so far. And it's not surprising that such complex processes rely on very complex brain networks. You are not so familiar with these images, but that show us that the colored parts of the brains are the parts that are involved in different aspects of what seems to be a very easy task, that is memorizing a path in environment and here, I don't think if I, no, uh, on the top left, or just recalling the same path, and as you can see, different parts of the brain are involved, or memorizing a place, not just a sequence of movements in environment, but how a place, for example, a square, is made, what is, is inside, or recalling the place. Um, for exploring environment and representing environments, individuals use different strategies and represent the code, the environment, the code in different format. The big uh, distinction in psychology is between allocentric representation that corresponds to on a survey view of the environment and ecocentric representation that corresponds to a strategy is called a root strategy. What that means? That means that when I look around in a novel environment, I can code the position of elements referring to my position in the environment, so I can see that the clock is just in front of me, or I c in this case I am using an egocentric strategy, or I can um, 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 localize elements referring to more general abstract uh, configuration, point of reference, they are not referred to my position, for example, to cardinal points, or just link their position each to the other without referring to position individual. What that means, apparently that, that makes no difference. Difference is that if I localize the clock from my present point of view in egocentric frame of reference, when I will enter in this room from the opposite side, I will need more time for localizing the clock because I have to mentally rotate my position in the room. Um, this is are two examples of what it means to uh, code space in egocentric or allocentric representation. When I explore this new novel city, what I memorize is a, is a sequence of views from my point of view during exploration. So it's a sequence of steps. There, and 
what I will take in mind is just the sequence of steps, the distance from one point to another point, and the direction when I turn uh, during my walking. Instead, if I use an aerocentric representation that I think is very common for you, uh, is a co very common way for you to code space, I just have a sort of mental map of the environment. And so I will have a representation that allows me to reorient without moving around, without having the need to turn myself for reorienting. Um, this two kind of uh, representation allow different levels of navigation. That means that when I have just an egocentric representation space, I need more time to find my way. I am less flexible. I have difficulties in finding shortcuts between different points in the environment. If I have an allocentric, an allocentric, uh, sorry, an allocentric um, representation, I will easily find shortcuts. Um, another characteristic is that uh, um, I can evolve from an egocentric representation to an allocentric representation space with experience, why I familiarize with the environment. But this is not true for all individuals. Some individuals are not able to shift from one kind of representation to the other one. Uh, this is an example of what happens when I memorize on the left, uh, when I memorize a path in a labyrinth, I, because I start every time from the same point, that is, I follow the arrow street to reach the goal point. If the experimenter makes the trick to uh, make me start from a different point, if I use an allocentric, if I develop a egocentric representation of the space, I will never reach the goal point because I will follow the same path I have made without recognizing my error. Instead, if I have an allocentric representation, I'm able to recognize that my point, starting point is different. I can easily reach my, um, my goal. The egocentric way is in the second labyrinth is given from the green path, while the allocentric is the blue path. Now, apart from any different strategies, it's that is having different way to represent the world that is uh, as a sequence of points in space or like a cognitive map. There are individual differences. There are people with uh, using egocentric strategy with a very high proficiency or very low proficiency, and people using allocentric strategies, strategies with a very high proficiency or with a very low proficiency. Navigational skills are very variable in population, and the variability is so high that it's quite, it's, um, a real challenge to, to explain them. What makes the difference? Why some people is very able and other is not? The first answer is a very common sense answer. Males are good navigators, females are bad navigators. Indeed, gender differences are, um, have been studied for a long time, and uh, several studies demonstrated that males um, um, learn novel environment quicker than females, are able to develop better cognitive maps, are more um, prone to use allocentric representation than um, uh, egocentric representation, uh, use uh, um, Euclidean um, features of environment, that is the general shape, of the geometrical shape of the environment for orienting, are able to, uh, um, to, to, to use distances and uh, angle rotation during the movement environment to develop a cognitive map. While females usually, when exploring environment, are very able to report how many shops there were along the way, uh, what was in the, in the shop, and uh, Things like that, and usually, uh, what mm, it, this makes difference, but also this has to do with different way to code space, and with different brain activation. That means that 
uh, in studies like this one uh, that I show you, in which um, individuals were required to learn this map and then to describe it, and to describe after learning the map uh, the way uh, the route from reaching the point A, starting from the point B, means report the path describing the length of each, uh, the relative length of each piece of route, the direction, the general direction toward north, toward left, uh, sorry, toward north, toward east, and so far. What we means report things like go to, um, toward the, the trees, then turn on right, and when you see the church, go on left. Um, a more basic difference there is between males and females it is this one. We asked subjects, individuals, to learn a path on this kind of um, carpet. On the carpet there are nine uh, black squares and uh, the experimenta show a short path moving on the, on the carpet and stopping on different squares. And then the subject have to repeat the same sequence until they learned it. And usually males are quicker in learning this path, where females are slower. However, after they learned the, the path, uh, there were no differences between males and females recalling the path, even after several hours. Um, so it seems that really the difference is a difference between gender. However, even there are an high variability between men's performances and between women's performances. And so there is something more in making individual differences. And also, some, I don't know why I am not able to animate, some females are really better than some males. So we studied a special group of, oh, why? OK. Uh, another point is that maybe that the task make difference, and different tasks may elicit better abilities in one of the gender. For example, it is well known that in uh, uh, the per department stores, males are very able to find their car in the park, the parking lot, where females are able to find the best way to visit each shop, uh, prefer a shop before the closing time. Um, however, jokes aside, some females have very good navigation abilities, like Isabella Tossier, that is famous for being a um, 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 a sailor, a solitary sailor, a single sailor, or Samantha Cristoforetti, they have special abilities that are very better than males one. And uh, we study special population. We studied um, the, Air, the Italian Air Force pilots. These are people that are selected because the, oh, they are very good special abilities, and we found that uh, uh, there is no difference between males and females in memory of space, in the, the ability to memorize space, to uh, develop cognitive maps, to use navigation information. Also, um, females, pilot females, are very better than non-pilot males. So their abilities are very, very high, higher than the mean of males. Um, this should be, uh, one of the causes could be that females are better because of the training. Um, so we tested them when just, they were just enrolled in uh, Air Force. And they were eroded because they were better than the mean of the population. And already there was no differences between males and females. And females were really better. The role of the females were really better than the non-eroded males. So gender is not the right answer to individual differences. It's not true that females are worse than males in orienting and navigating. Uh, 
there is a special information that is that good navigators are not only more able to, but they have a, a, a slight different brain organization in the sense that they have a more strong connection between the brain areas that are involved in coding space and, and allowing to develop a cognitive map. When you look to the differences, uh, you found that there are no main effect of gender. There is no, that means that there is no difference between males and females in the relationship between the, um, the, the, the type of, connect, of brain connection, the ability to navigate. At, uh, less for the fact that good male navigators have a little more connection, a little bigger connection between the left side of the posterior hippocampal uh, hippocampus and the left retrospinal cortex. There are two areas that are involved in this called special language. That is the way we use words for coding space. So there is a strange things that we found uh, after this. We wonder what makes the difference. One of the difference that the gender uh, in gender is very common is that um, Gender may have a different distribution of cognitive style. I mean, uh, cognitive style is uh, a way we code the world, we process information, we think, that has to do with our perceptual style, the way we percep perceive the world. It's called field independent or field dependent cognitive style. It, because um, I will show you why. <laughs> Give me just one second. And in, uh, it is an innate style. I mean, baby born with a precise style and will not change this cognitive style. You cannot modify cognitive style with training, with experience, with feedback, and so far and so far. In, the, in our world, in Occidental world, about three uh, males out of four are in the dependent field, while about three females out of four are field dependent. This is not true in special population. For example, in pygmaeus, we live in a very hard environment in which there are very little differences allowing to orient all are field independent. One of the difference between field independent and field dependent is that field independent people have better special abilities. What is field independence? Look at these pictures. Each of these is a, a, a trial of a test in which in, uh, in the dark, a subject see uh, a frame and a road. Um, and is told to judge if the road is perfectly vertical and to move the road since it is perfectly vertical. The road is not mentioned. Field dependent individual will align the road so that it is coherent with the disalignment of the, of the frame while field independent are able to ignore the, 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 the frame. That is the way in which these two kind of people perceive the world. I'm sorry, I think this is a strange echoes. Um, that is, field independent people are able to segregate elements in the environment, have an analytic way to perceive the, wo the world, while field dependent have a global holistic way to perceive the world and are less likely to note single elements, single features. They have other uh, advantages. For example, they are more empathetic, more sympathetic with the people, have a, a higher level of empathy. Another way to show this is that uh, this is another test in which we ask people to um, uh, look if in a complex picture if there is a representation of the simpler one that is look for the um, the right sided shape in the first picture in these other two pictures or in a task like this in which you have a 
some elements up that you have to look for in the, um, in the picture below. And I am a field dependent, I just found four of them. But field independent are able to find them very quickly. Uh, difference is not only the ability to find, most of the time, field dependent and field independent need to find the single elements. So we tested field dependence, field independence in subjects, and we, are, we measured the ability to move in the environment, and also some special thing that seems to have nothing to do with navigation, that is the ability to perform mental rotation, that is the ability to judge, sorry, if the two pictures on the right are the same or different uh, forms rotated with different angle of rotation. Um, a cognitive style predicts the ability to navigate and the ability to mentally rotate. Mental rotation is strictly related. It's the only cognitive test that predicts the uh, ability to learn a novel environment to develop a cognitive map. So, Field independent individuals have better performances in navigational tasks and mental rotation. And also, they are more likely to use an allocentric representation and uh, a survey strategy on navigation. They, um, while field dependent, are more likely to use an egocentric representation than root strategy. But we went a little farther because we are lucky in Rome. In Rome we have natural labyrinths. And so we took a group of students, uh, college students, that have never been in this beautiful place that is uh, the university hospital that has been built in the, at the beginning of the last, of the last century. Um, we asked them to move uh, as a very, very wide area. We asked them to learn a path, the red one. We, uh, the experimenter guided this, each subject along the path, then asked to repeat the path, correcting the subject if he or she was wrong, 40 times. Then the subject went at his own or her own, come back the day after, and repeated the path. So we measured the ability to learn the environment. Then we asked to um, perform a different task. The first one is to recognize the landmarks that were, oh sorry, the landmarks were along the path and to discriminate them from different similar um, elements. And also we asked them to draw the path on the map and to put the landmarks on the map. And what we found is that field independent are able to do this task very well. They learn very, very quick the path. Uh, they are able, they are better in all the special tasks than field dependent. And there is no gender differences. If we take in account the field dependency, independency variable, there is no effect of gender. Um, except for the fact that in field dependent they are worse, women are very worse than men. But just in field dependent. There is no differences in field independent. What has to do this with uh, with the topics we are, you are discussing today, it gave me a lot of ideas. For example, the fact that uh, I suppose that most of the people that is uh, organizing the space is field independent because of the way you think space. Why many of the people using these spaces, like me, feel the dependent, and I need a lot of information to, for not being lost. I think I was in time. Yes, it's wow. <laughs>